Now it's that time of the year, it's October, and you know we have to get into some spooky worlds. Hello all, it's me, Sprite VR. Today, we're going to take a look at some horror worlds that I found interesting and have yet to be solved. But I didn't want to bring you just some average horror worlds that everybody's been to already. I want to bring you some real spine-chilling stuff. Stuff that people haven't explored before. And that's what these worlds are, so I hope you can kick back, get some snacks, maybe something to drink. And while you're at it, make sure you like and subscribe, and if you can, join the Discord, and let's get into the video. World number one, I Love Her to Hell and Back, by Sleepies. We're going to start off with an absolute banger. I Love Her to Hell and Back is a random ARG world that I randomly found while I was just scrolling through VR chat, and it caught me by surprise by its interesting thumbnail but what caught me by surprise was the fact that even though this had a strange thumbnail the name was really weird it didn't relate to the thumbnail obviously and clicking on the world the description was off-putting the description reads written on the walls why so many times why 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 so many times there's also a ton of content warnings on this world as well such as adult language and themes sexually suggestive, graphic violence, extreme horror, and excessive gore. Now this really intrigued me because if this world has a huge furry, you know, thumbnail, how could this world be that scary? Investigating the creator more, it seems to be a generally clean account. It looks just like a regular VR chat account that isn't scary at all. This is their only world as far as this account goes, despite their groups being a little questionable but joining the world i was met with an apartment building now of course there were no windows in this apartment building but the windows that were were closed off by blinds with no sky and this world was filled with half mannequins now i don't have a phobia of mannequins or anything but these are still really off-putting and i'm not sure how to feel about them it was met with this really off and unsettling music that i just couldn't get out of my head it was really scary but trekking through i noticed a shotgun in the middle of the floor if i turned to my left there seemed to be a little shopping list one of the tasks being to repent and to take your medication now apparently our character hasn't taken our medication but we have repented now, clicking on the shotgun leads you to another apartment building, this time with no music and no more mannequins. But if you walk a little more in the room, you'll notice a red half mannequin with a note attached to it with a shotgun in front of it. This is what the note reads. Sometimes I wish I knew how it felt to not feel again. It's funny. Only she knew how to do that to me. She knew how to tear me apart till there was nothing left of me anymore. Maybe this is just my sick way of saying I love you. How could I? After all you've taken from me. Tonight I feel alive, as if I've been born anew. I will not be denied happiness anymore. Zell, if you even remember that name, I will come for you, and I will kill you. In this life or another. Now having read that, I picked up the shotgun, not expecting anything to happen, really. And what I was met with was horrors beyond my imagination. The skybox changed to a red, scrolling just image and was permanently stuck to my screen. It was just scrolling with loud, reversed music that I just couldn't turn down. I even tried moving around, but it didn't matter. I could obviously tell that I was in something, some sort of room, but I couldn't explore that room because I just couldn't see and the loud music was just overwhelming my senses. The only thing you can do in this part is to respawn, and so I did. I tried glitching out of the apartment by using a camera or a drone, and I actually noticed there's a second floor to these rooms. But it's always empty and there's usually nothing to note of in these rooms. Also, if you glitch out of these apartment buildings, you'll notice that the sky is actually a bright sky. But you won't be able to see if you're inside the apartment rooms. There wasn't really anything to note of when flying out of the world except that there was another room that you aren't able to access. But there's nothing really inside of it, so it's not very important. Show me the way to the 
This is honestly just a very off-putting room. It may it may not be the scariest room, but it's creepy. It's off-putting and unsettling. It gives you chills. And what this room really means, I think we've yet to discover. I think there's a lot of stuff we're missing out on. And I honestly think we could be getting more rooms by this creator later on that could help us explain what's inside of these rooms. But until then, we're just gonna have to leave this room where it is. Room number two, IDP Zero Hub by Identity. IDP Zero Hub is very interesting and honestly has a lot of secrets that have yet to be discovered. Loading up IDP Zero Hub, I was met to this huge void that was reminiscent of those old PS1 to PS2 graphics. I was met with a few doors revolving in what seems to be around a stone-ish like weird keypad that had different symbols on it that I've never seen before in my life. Pressing these didn't really do anything, but I could obviously tell it was some sort of keypad that needed a code to open these doors. Now there was a few doors I could open, which led to these worlds that didn't really seem connected to the world I was already in, so I didn't really bother joining them. One of these worlds was even Japan Shrine, which has been around for a while, so I don't really see how this could be co connected to IDP Zero Hub. Now one of these doors I opened and noticed that there was a TV at the end of the door. Turning on this TV didn't really do anything to help advance the world, but glitching under, I noticed that there was a door covered in static that probably led to a secret world that you can access. Now, can you access it? I'm not sure. You're probably gonna need to be able to glitch your way down there somehow, but I don't currently have the tools to be able to do that, so I'm sorry. Now, on the back of one of these doors, I noticed that there was a weird code that probably could be used to decode the keypad and probably enter in some new worlds. Now, I'm too smooth brain to figure out this code, so if you guys are able to decode this, then please let me know in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated, or you can DM me. Now I tried to do one thing, and that was to walk off the edge of the map, see if that could do anything, and I actually faded to black for some reason, it cut out the music, and I respawned, and when I turned around, I noticed that there was a door coming out from the ground that I could open, and opening this door led me to a secret world called Null, that was covered in eyes. Now this world is private, you can't search this up, it's only accessible if you do the secret. Now opening this up and walking through the door, I was teleported to a world that was strange. Upon joining the world, you're on top of a platform, in front of a huge rotating pyramid with a platform underneath with a bright light. There's also floating text around you saying to find answers and to find a way. There's obviously a lower level to the pyramid as well. Now I explored this world quite a bit, it's a huge world, and I couldn't really find anything to note of here that could help me advance in the other worlds. But I did press respawn and turn to my left and I noticed that there's a walkway to a key that you can grab. Now this key obviously leads to somewhere in the map, presumably the way that they're talking about. But I decided to walk around the side of the pyramid, and I noticed an entrance to the pyramid. Now trying to walk down there ended up fading the white and teleported me back to the spawn. And no matter what I did, no matter the angle I approached or how fast I hit the drop, I always respawned and I couldn't hit this entrance. I even tossed the key down there and it despawned before it could even reach halfway to the freaking entrance. It didn't work. There was nothing I could do to get it work. Avatar scaling, go go loco, you name it, it couldn't work. So what I did is I flew a drone down there, a camera drone, to see what was inside the entrance. And what was inside the entrance was nothing. There was nothing behind this entrance at all. It was obviously hollowed out for some sort of entrance. Maybe it was a trigger to get teleported somewhere. But inside the entrance, there was nothing. You can't go inside of it, which is very disappointing. But maybe if you were to find a way somehow, maybe there's a trigger for teleport to a world. But until then, I don't think we can do that. Now, IDP Zero Hub has a second world called The Void, and this is very similar to IDP Zero Hub. It also has a door that has a code at the back that can be decoded for the keypad in the front. And if you guys are able to decode this, please let me know. Now, this world had two worlds behind these doors, Louvre Hub, and it also had Mind Palace. These worlds you could not glitch into without opening these doors, no matter how hard I tried. I tried every tool in my arsenal, and I could not get inside these worlds. 
and I presume that you can get only get inside these worlds if you have the key to them. Now I tried to do the one thing that worked in the first map by walking off the edge of the map. Now to my surprise this actually did lead me to a secret door that I could rip the door off of but I couldn't enter inside of it. It was a black void that I kept walking through but nothing would work. I couldn't go into a world and there was no world portal inside of it. I just kept phasing through it no matter what I did. I even glitched under the map with a camera and a drone and there was nothing under the map and there was nothing above the map. So as far as what to do here, I'm completely stumped. And then behind the second door, the second wooden door, there was a blue symbol for the identity. So identity has its own logo from the creator and it has this logo on the back of the door. Now you can't interact with it or anything, but it's just sitting there, which is really weird. I'm really stumped on what to do in these worlds. I have no clue. Obviously it's something to do with the keypads, but I just can't seem to figure it out or decode these. So if I need your guys' help on this. If you guys are able to code it, please let me know or DM me because I really would like to get this figured out and hopefully unveil some secrets about these worlds. Until then, we're just gonna have to move on. Presence.jpg This is really odd more than it is scary but this is all genuinely one of the more off-putting rooms and genuinely left me on edge this is all in japanese so obviously i can't read japanese but i roughly translated it so if this translation is wrong please let me know but this is what the translation says for the description Presence refers to something that isn't clearly visible to the eye, but can be vaguely perceived from the surroundings. Human detect it through subtle sounds, the movement of air, including wind. There's even a hypothesis suggesting that we can sense quasi-static electric fields. Now, it's basically saying, in my opinion, it's basically saying that you're able to feel something watching you, something that's near you, by you at all times, but you can't see it. Now that in itself is absolutely terrifying. Now upon joining this world, I was joined in an art gallery full of photos of spirits that were captured with different years on them. Now I'm guessing these are the years he captured these photos of the spirits, but I'm guessing these are the ghosts he's trying to capture. I'm guessing these are the presences he's trying to capture. Now there really isn't anything to note here, it really is just more like an art gallery for these photos, but once you get to the end of the art gallery, there's a QR code with a sentence on top of it. Now, I translated this message and it basically said that these photos were captured when it was too late and to rest in peace to everyone that was involved. What the fuck? That's terrifying. What does that even mean? And there was a QR code underneath and you know I had to scan it. I scanned it and it actually led to a link where it made a tweet for me. It tagged a Japanese user and it made a tweet in Japanese. And this is what the tweet said. It tagged a random Japanese account, which I assume is the creator of the world or whoever. And the tweet said, please come here. Basically, I am inviting whoever this is or maybe a spirit to come haunt me, which is insane. Now, will I be haunted by a spirit? We'll be yet to see. Now this Japanese account had basically no followers and the description was translated into I'm going now. Now does this mean when I say come over here, does it mean I'm going now? Now is he on his way? We'll have to see. Yeah, this one was genuinely more spine chilling than the rest and honestly more off-putting than the rest. We'll have to see in the future if I really am haunted by spirits that I can't see. Wow, okay, I've been meaning to talk about these worlds for a while now, but the VRChat creator ended up actually getting banned and deleted from VRChat alongside all of his worlds. So, um, you would think I wouldn't be able to access any of the worlds, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. I was able to look up these worlds using a VRChat search website, and all these worlds were archived on this website. Now, there are multiple worlds, and I was only able to join two of them at the time they were out. But we're going to go ahead and start in chronological order. Now, I must warn you, a little trigger warning, a lot of these titles may be a little, a little, uh, a little strong. Just a warning. The first world is titled, Are the Kids Okay? And the description of this world is, Choking on the Dead Flowers. 
The second world is called Public Execution. This is the second world I was able to join, and it's basically a public execution room with an electric chair in one room that's severed off by glass and has a spectating area where you can sit down and watch public executions. It's basically a faux electric chair area, and the electric chair didn't actually work. It was just really weird. But what was more off-putting about this world is the description. The description is, I will not be denied my happiness, and it repeated over and over. This next world is called Bodies Hanging From Ropes. This is the second world I was able to join, and no, there were not any bodies hanging from ropes, but this is what I did see. It's a small, flat grass world with a sunset at the end. There's a park bench in the middle of this grass patch with a tree overhanging it. This grass patch is surrounded by a black fence so you can't get out, and getting near this fence would play a glitching sound, as if you weren't meant to be near the fence. Now there was calming music in the background, but something about it still fell off, especially with the name of the world. No matter what I did to the fences, I couldn't get outside of it, and there was nothing I could do to get anything scary happening. And the description of the world is called The Beauty of Life. The next world probably is the worst title of them all. Innocence Died Screaming. And the description is the exact same as the title. This one just sounds awful, and I'm not sure what this world was like inside of it but hopefully it wasn't bad if anybody was able to join this at the time please let me know what it was like um but this title is very off-putting the next world was called my heart bleeds for you and inside the description was a string of numbers 97 102 24 120 now i asked copilot to decode this and at first i thought it was some sort of code like base 64 but that didn't seem to make any sense. So I thought maybe it could be coordinates. The coordinates ended up leaving me to the Gulf of Thailand, which I'm not sure how to feel about that. That could be something, but I don't really think so. But I decided to look up to see if it was an IP address, and it is a Charters uh, Communication Incorporated um, IP address. It is a private IP address located in the United States. So my theory is it's something's coordinates or someone's IP address. I'm just more confused why they would put these numbers there. The next world was called Cleansed Soul, and inside the description was a string of Morse code. Now this Morse code was written really poorly and was jumbled in some parts, but Copilot was able to make out the a singular sentence, Kiki, I'm sorry. Now if Kiki may actually be some jumbled thing and may not actually be a name but it repeats twice so i'm assuming it's someone's name and obviously they're apologizing for something i'm not sure what the rest means because it's all jumbled but if somebody else is able to decode it then feel free to go ahead the next world was called find your hell and the description is also named that now i'm not sure what this world was like at the time so i can't really comment on it but the world name is really weird the next world it was called don't go far same with the description as well, and I don't know what was inside this world as well, besides the title, so if anybody was able to go inside, please let me know. Now this next world actually has a different naming scheme than the rest. This one is called Victim.Null, and the description just says, Some are. I'm not sure how to feel about this one. This one's different than the rest, and but it's still just really weird, and um... Who is the victim? Next world was called Plaything, and oddly it doesn't have a description, so honestly this is sort of a dead end world. And the rest of the worlds here were just honestly just still off-putting, but they didn't really feel like horror worlds, they were more just scuffed avatar worlds, so I'm going to move past those. But I noticed something weird about these worlds, and that's the author. The author's name is Sleeping. And if you notice, if we go back to our first world that we were in, you'll notice that we were in a world by a author named Sleepy. And if you look, these are in the same naming format as each other. The naming format is in the same way as the other worlds. The odd description feels much like these worlds. So this leaves me with one question. Are these worlds connected?